Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. The annual World Innovation Summit for Education, WISE, here in Doha, brings together thousands of education professionals to discuss developments and new ideas and to award projects of outstanding merit. We look at some of this year's winning projects. Teaching is one thing, but first you have to get students into the classroom. And in Africa, that remains a major hurdle. And the next challenge is ensuring that students actually complete their courses. Let's see how one project in Uganda is tackling the problem, especially in secondary schools. Although primary schools are universal in Uganda, in rural areas there are only secondary school places for around 20% of children. And getting government funding for state schools is difficult. The English NGO PEAS, Promoting Equality in African Schools, was founded in 2002 and is working hard to help solve the problem. <laughs> So the idea is that we want to create value for money, affordable schools, so that some of the poorest kids in Uganda can continue their education after primary school. The government contributes around 20 euros per term for each student. And Pease schools use the Ugandan curriculum, adding classes in entrepreneurship, agriculture and citizenship. In this subject, they are told that working, it is the only way you can drive yourself out of poverty. On addition to that, we have agriculture. Uh, it is a good subject, a practical subject, which is uh, empowering these children with the knowledge of growing crops since the area they are living in is agriculture. In the last decade, Pease have founded 21 secondary schools in Uganda and one in Zambia. They're funded by the government's 20 euro subsidy plus tuition fees. And the funding is topped up by the money they make by selling agricultural products, for example. In every school, half of all places are reserved for girls, who have traditionally not had much access to education in sub-Saharan Africa. We pay little money and it is even affordable to our parents. I like the teachers in Kerabi Secondary School because they teach well, they teach you and you understand clearly. The language they use is simple. If you don't understand English well, they simplify it, so I like them. Pease aims to create 100,000 secondary school places in Uganda by 2017. As a WISE award winner, Pease receives 20,000 US dollars. So, getting students enrolled in a bricks and mortar school is a challenge. But what about a virtual school? How would you feel about logging into school every morning instead of taking the school bus? We have a look at a project in Ireland which offers students a diploma which is recognized in the job marketplace. Here in Galway in the west of Ireland, people might not know his face, but they know his name. Mike Fierick set up the very first free, massive, open online course in the world, and today, MOOCs are very much part of the educational scenery. Allison, the website he set up in 2007, enables people from anywhere in the world to access vocational training, study academic subjects and take exams recognised in the workplace. When we started with Allison initially, uh, it was mostly people who were marginalised. So we had a lot of people in the US and UK, a lot of people that were unemployed, a lot of people that had the time, uh, they were either elderly, the young, uh, but increasingly, as we produce more and more professional content, you get people who are working full-time and just want to top up their education and, and remain competitive. Now there are more than 500 courses on the site. Everything including languages, economics, history, and four or five new courses are being added every week. Today, they're recording a new computer lesson, and within hours it will be circulated on the internet. Around two million people have used Allison. 
and around quarter of a million of them have passed exams. One man in India used Alison to get a qualification which won him a promotion, which changed his life. Uh, you know, my manager asked that, okay, Sunil, so everything is fine, your candidature is best. What about the certification? I said, I'm already pursuing project management course. And then he said that, from where? I said, I'm pursuing it from Alison. And he said that, okay, so can you tell me what all, uh, what's the syllabi, what are the modules, are you undergoing some sort of case study, stuff like that. And when I explained the theory which I learned from, you know, Alison modules, that really helped me to present my candidature in a strong and in a very, you know, impressive manner. So I think that, you know, that, that really played a lot. Uh, you know, I uh, getting another level in my career, so very important. It has been very important for me. Pupils come from everywhere, and 70% of them are women, like Carolina, who lives in Ireland and has studied English, computers, secretarial skills and shorthand, and now hopes to find a good job with her new skills. Alison is good for, for studying, for, like, for me, for mother, because I can do it any time I want. So basically, it was most of the time, it was in the evening time when my kids were asleep. And you know, no one course will give me the place to go 10, 11 in the night to study for one hour or two hours. Depends how I, how I have time, how much I need or how I feel to study. Alison, mainly funded by advertising, is now being translated into 10 languages worldwide. And what about preschools and primary ones, especially in isolated rural areas? It is important to provide the best possible education, but often it is also important to preserve local traditions and culture. Let's take a look at this project in Morocco. Two hours away from Casablanca, this school almost looks like a mirage, but it's a solid reality. This is a Medasat school, where children are taught in their mother tongue, Amazigh, the Berber language. We learn about lots of things, like recycling, reading, writing, lots of things. This school is very different from a state school. Here, all the teachers and directors listen to everyone, to what they say, and they know what's happening around us. We have strong relationships with the local population. That's not the case in other schools. In other schools, relationships are limited to those between teachers and pupils. This was the 49th school built by Medesat, with the aim of tackling educational underachievement amongst Amazigh students. It's also the first to develop a curriculum in Amazigh in Morocco. There are now nearly a hundred schools like this across the country, and they aren't only changing children's lives, they're helping adults too. Saeed, the village barber, never learned to read and write at school. But now he's learned and displays his diploma in his shop. I spent time on it. I didn't hesitate to stop work even though I'm the head of my family. I was willing to put time into learning to read and write. And I'm convinced that my example will help other people and my friends to stop being illiterate. The Foundation's aim is to build a thousand schools across the country by constructing five schools a year in Morocco and another one somewhere else in Africa every year. People who are illiterate, to me it's like a kind of blindness because they see images, they see things, but they don't know how to interpret them, nor how to read them. And I find that quite sad. And they can't communicate in writing. Education is very important because people who complete their education can choose a career that they really like.
To date, nearly 300 families and 15,000 students have benefited from the Medesat Foundation. And last year, 45 Medesat students even got university degrees. We will be back with more Wise Award winners soon. But meanwhile, we would love to hear your thoughts on this week's innovative initiatives via our social media pages. Goodbye for now. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.